Hi, Tom Gearing here. Welcome back to my shop. In this video, I wanted to share with you my most recent project, which was to build a 112 scale RC model of a heavy duty Mack truck of the same 1960s vintage as my model crawler crane. The subject truck I chose was a 1964 Mack model B81 tandem axle tractor that I have mated with the 112 scale flatbed trailer that I had previously built but recently modified to be compatible with the truck. In the following video, let me share with you the various details of this, my most recent build. Here is a photo of the real full-size Mack B81 truck that I selected as my subject model. Initially, I thought of scratch building the model. However, in my research, I came across this RC kit of a 112 scale version of a 1960s Russian truck whose cab looked very much like my subject Mack truck. However, it had notable differences. Nevertheless, I decided that purchasing and modifying the kit would be more expedient than scratch building, so that's the course I pursued. Let me now take you on a pictorial tour of the various modifications that I made to the King Kong model kit. I began assembling the kit's intensely detailed chassis by both following the written instructions and watching Terry Wilde's RC YouTube video entitled King Kong 112 RC 6x6 Military Truck Chassis CA30 Part 1. Displayed is the QR code for the first of Terry's two excellent videos in which he also specifies his recommended lighting and sound systems that I purchased and installed. After completing the basic chassis assembly, I modified the radiator and added the grill shutters as per this photo. I determined the approximate cut line on the existing radiator as shown by the arrow in this photo. The model's radiator cut line was determined to be about 575 one thousandths of an inch from the rear of the model's stock radiator. And that is where I made the cut. Then, after making a scale drawing of the new radiator and grill shutters that included a four times enlarged cross section of the grill shutter spacing, I proceeded to form the grill shutter frame using three one sixteenth of an inch square polystyrene tubing adding shutter strips cut from 80 thousandths thick polystyrene sheet, fixturing and welding them with MEK solvent. Next, I screwed two pieces of 80 thousandths polystyrene sheet, cut to the OD dimensions of the new radiator, on top of each other to a wooden fixture, and clamped the grill shutter on top so that I could drill four number 50 tap drill holes in the three stack components. After removing the grill shutter, I tapped the four holes in the two radiator faces with a 256 tap. Next, I cut a one quarter inch wide strip of the 80 thousandths polystyrene, heated it in boiling water and formed it around a one quarter inch thick wood form, and welded the front and rear radiator faces to it, again using MEK solvent. Here are photos of the fabricated new radiator frame and grill shutters. I finished the new radiator by installing the radiator cap and then MEK welding it to the model's previously shortened radiator frame. I then added a chrome Mac Bulldog that I purchased as a part from Bruder Models as illustrated in the photo of the finished radiator. I began the fender modifications by marking both of the fenders where the back of the new radiator would be. Then I cut back the forward end of each fender to that mark. Next, I machined out each fender's forward center section to create an opening for the yet to be relocated headlight frames. Templates were made for each of the new flat fender sections and each piece was cut from 80 thousandths polystyrene sheet. The new flat fender sections were then MEK welded 
to the model's previously modified polystyrene fenders. Left and right fender front faces were cut from 80 thousandths polystyrene sheet and 11 16th inch diameter holes were located and cut for the modified model headlamps. Number 11 drill holes were machined into the center of the model's two headlamp housings to accommodate the LED lamps. Similarly, number 31 drilled holes were drilled into the modified left and right turn signal housings. After MEK welding each of the fender panels to each fender, 1964 diameter holes were located and drilled into each of the assembled fender fronts into which the turn signal housings were welded with MEK. Two fender edge panels were cut from 80 thousandths polystyrene sheet. Each panel was then MEK welded to each modified fender assembly. An opening was then cut in each fender with a Dremel tool to allow for the LED turn signal bulb to be installed. Here are the two modified fenders shown unpainted with the air filter whose fabrication will be discussed next, installed to the right fender. Note that this painted fender that a 80 thousandths polystyrene tab was also installed on the right fender to land the bent nylon air filter ducting tube. Next, I created this scale drawing of the air filter that was based on photos I had found online and the fender modifications that I had envisioned. I began the fabrication by cutting out both the air filter's two circular top and bottom pieces and the two circular rings. Then I CA glued each to, the, to a one and a half inch length of three quarter inch PVC pipe. Next, I took a length of 3 8 diameter nylon round rod, heated it with a heat gun to a pliable temperature, and formed it around a bending fixture that I had machined out of 3 quarter inch oak. Referring to the sketch I had made of the air filter, I cut two triangular mounting gussets and MEK welded them to the air filter's polystyrene bottom, along with two MEK welded 80 thousandths thick polystyrene fender mounting plate layers, not shown in the photo, that were 0.47 inch wide and welded between the gussets. The partially fabricated air filter was positioned, clamped, and marked on the right fender's trailing surface. The top one of two air filter mounting holes was then drilled into the right fender using a number 50 tap drill and then that 256 tap drill hole center was transferred to the air filter's mounting plate, where the transferred hole was then tapped with a 256 tap. After mounting the air filter to the right fender with one 256 button head cap screw, a second 256 tapped hole was installed to finalize the air filter's alignment and mounting to the right fender. 3 8 diameter holes were located and drilled in both the top and side of the mounted cylindrical air filter. The previously formed 3 8 di diameter nylon round bar was then inserted into the side hole to verify the location of an 80 thousand thick polystyrene mounting gusset. A 256 tapped hole was then installed in the open end of the formed nylon round bar enabling it to be attached to the mounting gusset eventually with a 256 button head cap screw. Next, a short piece of 3 8 inch diameter styrene tube was MEK welded to a round cap that was cut from two MEK welded layers of 80,000 styrene sheet to form the air filter intake. Shown in this photo is the completed right fender with the air filter mounted. This internet photo shows the typical front bumper profile of the Mac B81 truck with the bumper's end wings angled back and their top sides gap filled with diamond plate panels. Both bumper end wings were formed and fabricated from two layers of 80,000 thick black polystyrene by 5 16 inch wide welded together and then cut and welded and included an angle of 123 degrees. 
A cardboard template of the bumper end wing diamond plate panel was made and used to cut out two copies each of both the aluminum diamond plate and 80,000 polystyrene sheets that were welded to each of the two angled end wing forms. After adhering the adhesive backed aluminum diamond plate to the panel, the fabricated bumper end wing assemblies were clamped inside the front bumper member and each fastened in place with two each 256 button head cap screws. Here is a close up view of the completed front bumper modifications. To install the rear mud flaps, I cut an 8 inch length of a piece of angle iron that came with the rear wooden carrier module that came with the King Kong kit to support both the mud flaps and blocks that were made to house the rear LED brake and turn signal lights. The mud flap assembly was attached using two quarter inch blocks that was shaped as shown to fit into each of the model's two rear bumper hoops with each block machined to provide a left and right 1 16th inch flange as shown with the white arrow that allowed it not to fall through the hoop. Each block used a 440 button head cap screw as pointed out with the blue arrow to lock the block in horizontal position as the two each 256 button head cap screws shown in the green arrow clamp the angle to each of the two rear bumper hoops. The radiator guard was fabricated by soldering two two and a half inch long strips of one sixteenth inch thick brass sheet and two one and seven sixteenth inch lengths of one quarter inch square brass tubing. The radiator guard's lower mounting strip was cut to be three eighths of an inch wide with four centered clearance holes for the small two millimeter bumper fastening bolts in their same five millimeter by fifty seven millimeter centered pattern. The upper sheet member of the radiator guard was cut to a width of 9 sixteenths of an inch with the completed fabrication as shown in this photo. A Lesu metal movable fifth wheel for 1 14th scale RC trucks can be purchased online for $50 or so. Two 1 16th of an inch by half inch by 2.82 inch long aluminum strips were used to adapt the fifth wheel to the model's chassis as shown by the two white arrows in this photo. I chose a 35 kilogram servo for the model's steering function. However, because of the modifications to the radiator, I needed to adhere the cables tight to the servo housing with silicone adhesive in order to avoid interference with the new radiator. A Spectrum Firma 70 amp brushed smart electronic speed controller and a Spectrum Firma 55 brushed crawler motor were selected for the model. I installed the ESC into the model's right side fuel tank but first drilled numerous cooling holes into the bottom of the tank. I was able to squeeze both the electronic speed control and a small 30 millimeter square cooling fan into the tank as shown. I selected the Triplot GT Power Engine Sound Simulated System that I purchased online from Amazon, as this module had the exact same plan view dimensions as the model's left side fuel tank. I cut off and sanded flat the tank's top section and then CA glued it to the non-speaker side of the sound unit. Note that I first installed four reliefs to enable access to the system's disassembly screws. Next, I cut out the two tapped bars from the bottom of the tank, mounted them to the model's left fuel tank mounting angles, then CA glued them to the speaker side of the sound unit. The installed sound system really blends in nicely with the model's appearance and conveniently projects the sound of the engine downward. The 12 LED lighting kit for steering and brake and the Spectrum AR620 receiver were each purchased online at Amazon for $14 and $15 respectively. Receiver and LED light wiring access holes were cut into the cab base 
before the receiver and LED lighting modules were snugly installed under the model's bench seat. Here is a photo of the wiring in progress. Note that the ESC's tank cover is removed and the front and rear fixtures that were bolted to the model enabling it to be stood on either end or upside down in order to route each of the LED wires. The wooden battery cabinet that came with the model was mounted immediately behind the cab with two 3.8 inch thick black starboard standoffs with each with four 440 drilled and tapped holes, two in the bottom for mounting to the frame and two on top for mounting the cabinet. Four short pointed lengths of 440 all thread were screwed into the two cabinet mounting threaded holes on each of the two blocks to transfer the mounting hole centers to the cabinet bottom by pressing down on the sharpened tips. Bottom, front, and rear panels made from black 80,000s polystyrene were added to form a box in a space between the two standoffs and to mount the main on-off two-position toggle switch. The battery cabinet was then clad with adhesive-backed aluminum diamond plate and mounted to the standoffs with four 440 button head cap screws. The flexible 12 gauge silicon power lead was led from the switch through the elongated hole in the bottom of the cabinet to an 1800 milliamp hour 3S LiPo battery. Wanting the model to have dual rear wheels, I noticed that King Kong also makes a 112 scale 4x4 model truck that has a single rear axle with dual rims and tires. However, these tires have a slightly larger OD at 95 millimeters. I ordered sets of the dual rear wheels, 10 of the larger OD tires, and a set of four 12 millimeter hex adapters from AliExpress.com. The CA30 model's wheels were directly keyed to the shafts with a small pin inserted through a cross hole in each shaft whereas the replacement CA-10 dual rear wheels were keyed to a 12 millimeter hex adapter that also is keyed to the shaft, however with a slightly larger diameter pin. I therefore needed to enlarge one of the two cross keyways with a number 47 drill. The stock soft foam tire liners were too soft and pliable for my liking, so after exploring options, I decided to use 6.2 inch long lengths of 5 8 inch diameter garden hose that I slit on 7 16 of an inch centers using a fixture I made and formed by a cable tie around the rim then inserting each new 95 millimeter tire before assembling into each wheel. I used chromed emblems, door mirrors, handrails and the exhaust stack that I purchased from BruderParts.com. BruderParts.com can be accessed by scanning this QR code. And of course, there is the component painting and decal application. I chose to paint the model with the same Testers 1214 Brilliant Yellow as I used on my model crane. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. Stay well and in touch.